This is Dr. Prashant Bharadwaj. Today's topic is Introduction to Facility Location. Another very broad topic in operations management, where to locate your facility. And that decision is so different if you're looking at a retail facility versus if you're looking at a manufacturing plant versus you're looking at a warehouse or a service location like a hospital or an educational institution. So each one of these decisions is a little different. The factors that you're going to consider while deciding where to locate a retail outlet or a service facility or a manufacturing plant or a warehouse, distribution center, so on, are different. What we will do in this chapter is get an overview a very simple introduction to how companies make those decisions whether you're McDonald's or Walmart or Boeing picking a supplier and when you talk about supply chain management we'll go into little more depth what are some of the factors we consider whether we want to get the product supplied from a supplier in China or Bangladesh or Indonesia or Mexico assuming you are a manufacturer in the United States or any other country. In addition, when we talk about location, it's a three-tiered decision. The broad decision is where in the world do you want to locate your facility? So the country, the region, are you going to be in Western Europe or in South Asia or in Latin America? That's your first level decision. Which country, which region? Once you do that, once we decide that Toyota wants to locate its facility, manufacturing facility in the United States or in India, when BMW wanted to locate its facility in the United States before they decided on South Carolina, they had multiple states as candidates. Same thing with Mercedes-Benz. Before they decided on Alabama, they looked at many other possibilities. So the second level of decision is which state, which geographic region within a country. The third tier is the specific location, the site where you're going to locate it. You know that you're going to do it in Western Pennsylvania, but within Western Pennsylvania, there may be multiple sites which may be good candidates which one to pick. So we will look at these kinds of decisions that companies tend to make irrespective of what kind of facility it is. The book talks about the hub, the central hub of Federal Express. The hub and spoke system that was started by Frederick Smith of Federal Express which has now been utilized by all major airlines around the world is an excellent example of facility location. Why did FedEx pick Memphis as its hub? And all of you remember the concept of hub and spoke system where instead of having a flight going from one location to another and if you are serving multiple locations before the hub and spoke system with a simple example if you had five different destinations for your airline, the number of aircrafts that you will need would be 10, assuming you have direct one-to-one -one connection between each one of these locations. However, if you have a hub and spoke concept, so all the aircrafts start from the origin, go to the hub, and from there they go back to the destination. So irrespective of where the passengers are flying from a particular origin, they all go to the hub. And at the hub, they switch to the planes that came from their destinations. This is a simple hub and spoke system in concept, but it is a, one of the biggest innovations in transportation history. And the fact that Memphis was picked was because it was the center of gravity of the United States. 
it is not the center of the United States. It is the center of gravity of the United States. If you really want to take the center of the United States, maybe it has to be somewhere close to uh, Colorado, Denver, Colorado, St. Louis, Missouri, are probably more central to the United States. We are talking about the continental United States, the 48 states, excluding Alaska and Hawaii. However, Memphis is the geographic center of gravity, which means that there is more population in the northeast and southeast, which will pull the center closer to the east of the United States. From Memphis, approximately 90% of the United States can be reached within three hours of flying time. So you can pick up a package until 6 p.m. in New York from a business. Make sure that it, the package reaches Memphis late in the night. It is sorted and it is put on the aircraft that came in from LA and in the middle of the night that flight takes that package going to Los Angeles and by next day morning business time nine o'clock eight o'clock whatever the assured time of delivery is the package is delivered to the other business this is possible only because of the excellent idea of uh, hub and spoke but in addition the idea of picking Memphis which is the center of gravity of course there are other reasons for Memphis Memphis is one of those airports within the United States which is closed for the fewest number of days or where the service is interrupted for very few days if you look at the Northeast there are many days in the year where the airports are affected by snowstorms if you look at southeast you will see many of the airports affected by hurricanes and some other parts of the country in the middle you have tornadoes some other parts you have floods on and on whereas Memphis is slightly below the snow belt there were other factors too Memphis airport was underutilized chapter what are some of the factors that are utilized in laying in locating a facility similar to what FedEx did in locating their major central hub location is definitely one of the most important decisions a firm makes increasingly global in nature obviously because today you are not restricted to a region or a country it significantly impacts both fixed and variable costs. Fixed costs like land and variable costs like labor, utilities, so on. And this decision is made quite infrequently. In many cases, a one-time decision for 20, 30, 50 years, you don't make changes. What is the objective in locating a facility optimally? to maximize the benefit of that location to the firm. Location decisions are based on low cost, require careful consideration. Okay, As we will study in a, a few minutes, cost is not the only criterion in facility location. We got to be very careful because sometimes it may appear in the initial few days and months that the cost is low but over the long run it may not be the ideal location if you want to minimize the costs we will see some examples of that once in place location related costs are fixed and difficult to reduce some more repetitive stuff here it's a long-term decision. Once committed to a location, many resource and cost issues are difficult to change. Once you have put in all your uh, sunk costs in building a facility, it becomes very difficult to make a change. As I said, the first level of decisions is at the country level. 
some of the decisions uh, criteria, some of the criteria that you would look at are critical success factors, what are some of the political risks if you want to locate your facility in in Venezuela for example or you want to locate your facility in China what are some of the political risks over the long run even if it's a democratic country like India when the government changes there are possibilities of rules and regulations and policies that may change attitude towards companies from certain countries companies from certain industries may be viewed differently so you got to be aware of those political uh, risks and government rules on the other hand what are some of the incentives there are countries where they provide incentives for companies to come and locate their facility what was one of the major reasons that BMW located its facility in South Carolina they got a two fifty million dollar tax break a big incentive for them to locate there I will not go through each and every one of these factors labor talent is very important the cost of labor may be low in some countries but do they have the ability the talent to make good quality product at low cost high productivity all of these are important availability of raw materials supplies communication energy very important there are countries where you do not have the electricity and energy required or they are too expensive you have to look at all of these or they may not be available in the near future so you have to look at it from the long term or intermediate term exchange rates and currency risks are critical very important if the currency is very volatile and if the currency becomes stronger in the international location then it's going to be very expensive for you to make the product there and export it out of there so you have to be very careful in deciding which country you want to locate your facility many of the companies now trying to leave China because the labor rate in China is increasing slowly they want to locate to Bangladesh Vietnam Sri Lanka many of these countries especially if you're talking about textile industry but you also probably have been following the problems in terms of safety and poor work conditions in Bangladesh so you have to look at all of these factors before you decide on which country then the next level of decision is which region which community so or which state if you're looking at the United States so here what you see here is the Midwest the Great Lakes region if you look back until the 1980s majority of all the manufacturing activity in the United States took place in the Great Lake region in Michigan Ohio Pennsylvania New York Illinois Indiana all of these but today it is much more diversified around the country you will see manufacturing activity all around the country that's because labor availability is there there is the southern part of the United States is more attractive to many people because of the climate you can pretty much golf 365 days a year if you're a golfer whereas if you're in the northern part of the United States many people like the four different seasons which is not available in the southern part of the United States when Boeing moved its headquarters from Seattle they wanted to be in the center of the country the three finalists that they had in terms of cities was Denver Dallas and Chicago and one of the reasons that they picked Chicago ultimately is because the executives wanted to be in a location which offered them all kinds of access to airport infrastructure to good school systems to entertainment 
all those different things that executives look for. Cost and availability of utilities is very important. Environmental regulations are critical. They change from country to country, from state to state, from region to region. Proximity to raw materials and customers, also very important. Pittsburgh, if you look at the city that is closest to us at IUP, you know that Pittsburgh used to be one of the top five cities in the United States in 1900 because of its steel making power. And steel, in addition, the topography of Pittsburgh was very useful at the time because right from Pittsburgh on River Allegheny to River Ohio to River Mississippi, you could reach pretty much the entire country. You could transport steel and any other goods. But today, since that mode of transportation is not that critical, Pittsburgh is not even in the top 15 or 20 cities in the country. It has done other things to revive. It has focused on light manufacturing. It has focused on healthcare. It has focused on energy and other areas. And there is a renaissance in Pittsburgh, but the economy is not based on what was there in 1900s. The third tier or level of decision is the specific site. Once you have decided that you want to be in the region of Indianapolis, the state of Indiana, then you want to look at zoning restrictions, the site size. You want to have a five acre plot to locate your facility. So you want to see what is the appropriate place. The proximity to highway systems. If you're manufacturing something and immediately want to make sure that it reaches the distribution centers or the retail outlets, you want to be close to the highway system. If you're a Walmart distribution center, look at any Walmart, Kmart distribution center. They're usually at the intersection of major interstates for obvious reasons. Proximity of services, supplies needed. If you're locating a manufacturing facility, you'll be more interested in minimizing the cost. Whereas if you're looking at a retail facility, you'll be looking at maximizing revenues. So you want to look at a nice facility where you can draw customers. Whereas if you are a manufacturing plant, you don't need to worry about customers coming into your facility. You are worried about making the product at the lowest cost, having the least environmental impact. So there are three levels of decisions as you see in locating a facility. And there are slightly different factors you look at at each level. Going into a little more depth here on some of the factors, labor productivity, the key word here is not labor cost, it is labor productivity. So wage rates are not the only cost. This, the book talks about a specific example of a company that located its facility in Juarez, Mexico, because the labor cost per day is $25 compared to its original location in Connecticut where the labor cost per day was $70. So you can see that at first look you will feel that the one in Juarez is definitely cost effective because it is a third almost of what it costs in Connecticut but look at the number of units that are produced by the workforce in Connecticut versus Juarez Mexico in Connecticut they were able to produce 60 units per day whereas in Juarez they were able to produce only 20 units per day now look at the per unit cost $1.17, $1.25. So in this extreme example where you clearly see that staying back in Connecticut is better than making it in Juarez, which is going to cost you per unit more, although the labor rate per day or per hour is nearly a third of what it is in Connecticut. 
even if this case is not true, even if it cost $1.17 in Connecticut and 50 cents in Juarez, you may still want to go further and explore whether it is worth taking your facility to Juarez. If your entire customer base is in northeastern United States, it may still be worthwhile to produce, in, produce it in Connecticut because of the transportation costs, because of the setup costs in locating the facility in Juarez. So the point I'm trying to make here is the decision to move from Connecticut to Juarez in this example should not be based only on labor cost. It is much more in-depth. Exchange rates and currency risks, we talked about that briefly. Tangible costs such as utilities, labor, materials, taxes. Intangible costs like public transportation, quality of life. Many executives want to be in a location where there is a professional football team, where there is access to an opera house, where there is access to Broadway music, where there is access to theater, and so on. You want to live in a nice school district that will help your kids if you're looking at public schools. So these are intangible costs. You have to look at both the tangible and the intangible costs. Location decision based on costs alone can create difficult ethical situations also. Because when you are moving your facility from one location to another solely based on cost, you are uprooting many jobs. Of course, there are many companies who are doing that on a daily basis. But if your entire customer base is in the location where your original facility was, it creates a difficult ethical situation. We will discuss that more because this is a common question. Should we locate our facility within the United States or should we locate it in an Asian country or a Latin American country, assuming you are a U.S. company? And there's always that discussion about how majority of what we see in Walmart is made in China. Walmart's business is coming from the people living in that region, but majority of the products are coming from an offshore location. So what are some of the ethical dilemmas involved in that? Apple, a company which sells its products in the United States and all over the world, sometimes gets criticized for not creating as much jobs in the United States as it is in other parts of the world. So it is a difficult ethical dilemma. Does Apple not want to make their products in the US? Obviously they would want to, but the cost to the customer will be exorbitant. Does Walmart want to sell products that are made in the US? Yes, they would love to, but how many takers would they have? for those more expensive products. So you as a customer, you as an employee, you as a different stakeholder, look at facility location in a different way. So there are many ethical dilemmas involved in facility location. Political risks, we talked about that briefly. So you have to be very careful about uh, different countries whenever you want to locate facility in a new country, you want to look at the unionization, the attitudes of workers over absenteeism, punctuality, legal and ethical issues, all of these are important. Proximity to markets, important, especially for service industry. Proximity to suppliers, that's one of the hallmarks of just-in-time systems. If you look at uh, Toyota, in Toyota City, you will see all the major suppliers are right next to the Toyota assembly plants, making it very easy for Toyota to get their products supplied as and when required. 
proximity to competition, which is also called clustering. It is companies cluster around because of availability of natural resources, availability of capital, availability of talent, and you will see many examples of clustering. Why are many software firms located in the Silicon Valley, in Boston, in Bangalore, India, which is called the Silicon Valley of India, where we have IUP's MBA program? Because of the availability of talented resources. If you go to Silicon Valley, you have many top educational institutions there. Venture capital is available there. That's the reason you would see many software companies there. Wine making is because of the availability of natural resources. Whether you talk about Napa Valley in the United States, the Bordeaux region in France, or the newer wine making countries, the Central Valley in Chile, the Hunter Valley in uh, Australia, in South Africa, many of these countries because of the availability of natural resources and the climate in terms of wine making you see clustering. More examples theme parks you go to Orlando Florida you not only see all the Disney parks you will see the Universal Studios the SeaWorld and many other amusement parks because it's the weather is beautiful and a person who a family which goes to see Disney World may also go and see Sea World. So that's the reason. Electronic firms in northern Mexico where there are maculadoras. Maculadoras are towns where a lot of assembly plants are located in the border of the United States and Mexico within Mexico. And the reason that part of the world is witnessing clusters of companies is because of NAFTA, North American Free Trade Agreement, which uh, creates a nice advantage for companies to locate in Mexico because of the cheap labor there, but right at the border with the United States so that once they are done assembling, they can move to the United States and utilize the infrastructure within the United States. And there is no duty because of NAFTA. You can export it into the United States. So there are many other examples of clusters. A simple example of clusters, you might have witnessed this in retail. A lot of furniture retailers located on the same highway next to each other. A lot of auto dealerships located next to each other. Very convenient for customers. If you go to New York City, you will see a lot of diamond merchants on the same street. So several examples of clustering of companies. Now let us talk about a few examples of methodologies that are utilized in facility location. One popular method is factor rating method because it can use a wide variety of factors to be included in the analysis. The factor rating method works very similar to what we use in interviewing and selection of candidates for a job. So let's take a simple example. If you want to hire somebody for a job, you have certain set of criteria. You are looking at the education, you are looking at the experience, you look at their communication capability, so on. So these are half a dozen factors. And each factor has a weight. So education may have 40% weight if you're looking at an entry-level position. And experience may be 10%. If somebody has experience, great, in the entry-level position. If not, the weight is only 10%. Communication is 25%, how they can communicate verbally as well as in the written mode. So you have weights for each criteria, adding up to 100%. Then you have candidates. You have half a dozen candidates who you have shortlisted, looking at their resumes, and you're inviting them for interviews. So what do you do? After the interview, you identify the points given to each one of these candidates on each one of these criteria. 
and then you take a weighted average and then find out which candidates are on the top and then pick the best candidate. So if you look at this analogy, it's very similar to what they do in the factor rating method. So let's look at the six steps. Develop a list of relevant factors called critical success factors. So you're looking at the transportation infrastructure. You can look at the school system. You can look at availability of raw materials. Depending upon what kind of facility, you will look at all of that. You may look at the population demographics if you're looking at retail. Availability of raw materials may not be important when you're looking at a retail sector. For example, when the example I was giving, when we looked at Boeing moving from Seattle to the center of the country, one of the factors they looked at was the number of sunny days in all the three finalists, Chicago, Denver, and Dallas. As you know, Seattle has one of the least amount of sunny days among all major cities in the country. They even looked at the number of Starbucks per square mile. That's true. They really looked at that. But look at point number two. Assign a weight to each factor. So in the case of Boeing, the weight given to number of Starbucks is minimal, negligible. Whereas the weight given to the airport infrastructure was very high because we are talking about not manufacturing workers. We are talking about moving only the headquarters. Boeing still has its manufacturing assembly facility in Seattle. What they moved 10 years back was the headquarters. The top executives were the only ones who moved. So the access to good air travel is critical. So if you look at Chicago, look at Dallas, look at Denver, they're major hubs, especially Dallas, which is the major hub for American Airlines. And if you look at Chicago, Chicago has United and American. So very important, you give weights to each factor. Develop a scale for each factor. So one to five, one to 10, one to three, you have a scale so that you can rate each candidate location. Score each location for each factor. Multiply scores by weights for each factor. Recommend the location with the highest point score. Now the key word there in point number six is recommend, not choose. Because as I will say all the time, all the quantitative techniques are going to do is provide you a starting solution, not the final solution. So here, sometimes the candidate which gets the highest point score may not be the one that is finally picked because there may be other qualitative factors that may come into play. In the case of Boeing, the grapevine says that the ultimate decision to go to Chicago was because they were behind the scenes strings pulled by the then Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives, Mr. Dennis Hastert. So you never know. I mean, that is a, that's a theory that, that happened. But even if that is not the case, the point I'm trying to make is there are some qualitative approaches taken after the quantitative scoring is completed. So the factor rating method is very good method when you're trying to locate a headquarters, an office, a manufacturing plant. The examples I gave earlier, Toyota manufacturing plants in the United States, BMW, Mercedes, all of them use the factor rating method to shortlist the finalists and from that pick the best location. Location break-even analysis. Everybody is familiar with break-even analysis where the two things you're looking at is the cost volume. So you look at both the fixed and the variable costs. You plot the cost for each location and based on the volume of production, you can pick which location is appropriate. So the next picture gives you a nice graphic. 
There are three different locations here, Akron, Bowling Green, and Chicago. So which is the best location? So if you look at these three graphs here, lines, Akron with the green line has the lowest fixed cost of 30000 whereas Bowling Green has the next higher fixed cost of 60000 and Chicago has the highest fixed cost, as you can imagine, a big city. So all the costs will be higher fixed cost. It's 110000 So if the volume is less, you would obviously not go to Chicago because you're incurring 110000 because the Akron cost is only 30000 fixed cost. But we are also going to look at the volume now. If the, for you to look at the volume, then you have to look at the variable cost. As you can see, the steepest curve here is that of Akron, where you will see that the gradient of this, the slope of this Akron curve is the highest, which means that the variable cost is high in Akron, then the next one is Bowling Green, next one is Chicago. Again, in this example, you will see that the Chicago variable cost is the least and the fixed cost is the highest. It may not be the case, but in this example, it is so. So if you look at any volume less than 1,000, 1,000 or less, the ideal location would be Akron. So if you look at this, the green line is below the blue and the purple lines, which means Akron cost curve is the best if the volume is 1,000 or less. If the volume is above 2,500, you will see that the lowest cost is the purple line, which is Chicago. So if you know that we are going to produce more than 2,500, automatically Chicago is my ideal location. If I'm producing between 1,000 and 2,500, the blue line corresponding to Bowling Green would be the ideal location. So the break-even analysis will look at both the fixed and the variable cost, draw the graph corresponding to the fixed and the variable. Subsequently, it will look at the volume. If you know that the production volume is a specific amount, then you can drop down the lines corresponding to these volumes and then check which one is the ideal location. So the break-even points here are 1,000 and 2,500 in this example. The other method that I had mentioned earlier is the center of gravity method. This method is ideal when you're looking at locating a Walmart distribution center or a target distribution center. So a typical Walmart distribution center can distribute the products to a hundred retail facilities of Walmart. So you can imagine how big they are. So where do you locate this particular distribution center which is shipping products to 100 different Walmarts? It has to be at the center of gravity. When we say center of gravity, we are not looking at the geographic center. Let's look at a simple example. Let us say that you are using the distribution center to ship your products to two retail facilities A and B. What happens if I locate the distribution right in the middle of A and B? That is perfect if the number of trips I'm going to make from the distribution center to A as well as to B are the same. But what if I'm making 20 trips in a truck from distribution center to retail facility A in a week? On the other hand, I'm making only 10 trips from the distribution center to retail facility B per week. You understand my point. Where would you locate the facility? Closer to A or to B or in the middle? It makes sense to put the distribution center closer to A because you're making two times more number of trips to retail facility A from the distribution center than you are from the distribution center to the retail facility B. So what do you consider here? 
where are the markets located so like I said in the Walmart example there are 100 retail outlets that is their market what is the volume of goods shipped to those markets how many trucks are you shipping how many truck loads per week per day per month thirdly what is the shipping cost what is the distance and in supply chain terminology we say we want to minimize the load distance factor the load is the number of loads trucks you're going to ship and distance is the number of miles or kilometers that you're going to ship so the center of gravity will minimize the total sum of the load distance a very useful tool when you're trying to locate a distribution center or like we studied earlier the hub in case of FedEx the transportation model is ideal when you have multiple origins and multiple destinations if you're extracting crude oil in half a dozen countries around the world and shipping that crude oil to different refineries around the world and from those refineries you're shipping oil to different destinations the transportation model will be ideal where you are going to decide from which refinery are you going to ship to which different destinations from which area are you going to take the crude oil to which refineries how much you may be taking from the same refinery to multiple destinations so a transportation model is ideal to minimize to optimize the production and shipping costs it's a special case of linear programming problems linear programming which you might remember from uh, from quantitative models or decision analysis so we will not discuss that uh, in this uh, class I hope you remember how to solve linear programs and the book gives you a nice example of distribution of Volkswagen's parts it uh, gives the locations of Volkswagen's from Germany to Canada to the United States to Mexico Brazil Nigeria South Africa uh, China and Japan and it shows where from where you're shipping finished vehicles vehicles for assembly parts engines and assembly units so this is a transportation model which facilities are we going to use to source products for which destinations when you're talking about service location it is not like locating manufacturing like I said earlier the important uh, factors here are purchasing power of the drawing area so what is the catchment area from which you are getting your customers from what kind of purchasing power do they have you may not be able to locate a Bloomingdale's in a small town mall obviously because they do not have the purchasing power you may not be able to locate a high-end hotel in a smaller town if you want to locate a rich Carlton in even in a city like Pittsburgh it is very difficult so you gotta look at the purchasing power service and image compatibility of the area what kind of competition what kind of uh, uniqueness that the firms and the competitors locations provide the quality of management that is available and this picture gives you a nice distinction between manufacturing companies goods producing companies when they locate the facilities their major focus is minimize cost minimize cost whereas when you're locating a service retail or a professional facility the focus is not minimizing cost it is about maximizing revenue not that cost reduction is not an issue there it is important but more important is maximizing the revenue yeah there's a lot of uh, different factors and here there are some specific techniques that are provided the factor rating method like I said earlier is useful in both service and manufacturing on manufacturing you have transportation method you have break-even analysis 
whereas on the service side you have traffic counts, demographic analysis, purchasing power analysis, you can get all the economic related data in uh, service retail facility, center of gravity method that we talked about. So let us spend a couple of minutes on regression and geographic information systems. The book talks about the La Quinta hotels. When they try to locate a new hotel, they use linear regression, a regression model. And you all remember the regression model, you look at several independent variables to explain the variation in the dependent variable. Now, the lower the number of independent variables, that can clearly explain the variation in the dependent variable, the better the model. And La Quinta started with 35 independent variables. If all of these independent variables had to be taken into account while deciding to locate a facility or not, it would be very difficult to get that accurate data and use that data in the analysis. But look at their final model. The final model had only four variables with R squared of 51.51. That is 51% of the profitability of locating a specific hotel in a location was predicted by just four variables. What are the variables? What is the price that they charge? And then median income levels in the region, easy to obtain the data. State population per in, you can easily find out that population, whether it's Pennsylvania or California or Maine. And the last variable is interesting, location of nearby colleges, how many colleges? So you can imagine the impact of colleges on the hotel industry. So just using these four variables, they can predict the profitability of locating a new hotel or an existing hotel. So another way of identifying the location of facilities or the profitability of existing facility. The call center industry which has become so prominent in the last two decades originally there was a move to have all the call centers in the Midwest region in Iowa in South Dakota and so on in the United States but today the call center industry is very well known in the United States and Western Europe. Majority of the English speaking call centers are located in India, many in Philippines. The reason is the ability of many of the people in these countries to speak the language. It requires no face to face contact or movement of materials. Many of the traditional variables are not at all relevant. All you require is availability of capable labor. That's it. Geographic information systems. A simple example of the GIS is all of you have used GPS when you're traveling and when you're looking at the GPS you can also have features on the GPS which can tell you exactly where the gas station is, where there is a hotel, where there is a McDonald's, where there is a toll, on and all. A GIS is a multi-level GPS. It can provide you databases that include complete census data of the region, all kind of demographic data, all kind of economic data. It can give you complete data about the utilities available, all kind of geographic features, the topography of the region, and location of major services. So what is the use of this GIS system? A manager who is trying to identify a particular site for their, for their facility to be located, for the restaurant to be located. They can look at all of this data, the census data, geographic features, location of other major services, and make a quick decision on where to locate their facility. So what we have discussed in this specific module is what are some of the factors that are utilized in locating a facility at three different tiers. 
and a variety of tools that are used to locate a facility. When we talk about supply chain management, we will discuss this in a lot more detail, each one of these tools. Thank you.